I woke up, had a bagel, and did my normal morning thing. It just happened to be at like 3.30 or 4 in the morning. I think one reason the lead up to this swell was really relaxing was that I've been home for so long this summer. Usually I'm traveling all summer and I get home in the fall and I'm right into like a big training block to prep for winter. Whereas this entire summer I've been home. I haven't even left Maui since March. And I had all my boards dialed, all my gear ready. Everything was organized and it's nice. It's a nice change. Super beautiful boat ride up too. There was no wind and the sun was just barely creeping up in the gray light. So it was easy, not a bumpy boat ride at all. It's basically like riding a escalator out to Jaws. When we got there in the morning, it was really slow. There was these big lulls between sets and then you could just see around 7.30 or 8, the energy really started to set in. Every set seemed to get a little bit bigger. They had a lot more volume and energy to them. And I think once the day kind of got going, the momentum of the session really built and the swell was just gnarly. It was a really raw swell with a lot of energy. The waves were really hard to line up and get underneath and actually have a line into. You know, your first day back at Jaws in quite a while and it's just wedging super heavy sets. There were some that came really wide, there were some that came deep, and then the really big ones just seemed to like build the entire wall through the lineup. So it was really hard to know where to be. And there were a few gigantic sets that just smoked the whole lineup. So it felt like this cat and mouse game for a little bit of trying to position yourself. And it was really hard to anticipate where to be to give yourself an opportunity into one of those waves. This wave was really different for me because it was the only set the entire morning that I don't have like a really vivid memory of like analyzing the set coming in and seeing where might give me an opportunity to maybe catch it. It's like there's a gap of time that I don't remember anything and it was almost like I just blacked out for a period of time. And then what I do remember is just a last second thought of seeing this giant wall standing up as I was turning and just knowing like, okay, I think I can make this wave. Once I got a handful of strokes into the wave, I felt this rib kind of come up through the lip and it just lifted my board a tiny bit. And when I felt that lift, I jumped up a little bit further onto the board than I normally would have dropped in at just to try to force the nose back into the wind and get down the face. And while I'm doing that, I was looking up and I could see the lip starting to kind of feather and I could tell I'm going into the barrel here, which is kind of, as soon as I turned around, I knew to make the wave, I'm gonna to have to get into the barrel at some point. And as I got under the lip, it just felt like this big, massive emptiness. I felt like I was in a really good place to make the barrel. I felt like I got high enough and had enough momentum to drive forward even as the barrel started to breathe. And I thought as the barrel started to suck back and fill with spray and whitewash, it just stung my face really, really hard. My eyebrows, my nose, and my lips were stinging from the spit. And I thought that might be you know, the wave projecting me out with the spit in front of the foam ball, but it had just filled up like a tornado and boom, just completely vaporized. Underwater was extremely violent on that one. <laughs> it's like just full tomahawk. And I don't know how, because I didn't anticipate falling. I actually thought I was gonna make the wave the entire time until I was underwater. So I don't know how I did, but I did get a really good breath. I remember thinking underwater during a violent tumble, like, oh, I have a really good breath on that fall. So feeling, feeling pretty good down here. And it just was 
really violent, but as the violence started to subside and it was just kind of holding me down and tumbling a little bit less intensely, I felt really good. Like even though I didn't make it, it's a really special wave for me because of how intense the drop was, what the wind felt like, and so many little nuances that happened before the fall even. Yeah, it would have been awesome to make it, but you know, Jaws, Jaws has the final say on every single wave we ride. If Jaws wants you to make the wave, you're gonna make it, and if Jaws doesn't want you to make it, then you're probably gonna get a big chandelier to the forehead.